So it's no secret how I feel about fan-favorite Clone Wars character Ahsoka Tano, as revealed by the handful of other videos on this channel that I have dedicated to her. Now, there are a few channels out there that are openly anti-Clone Wars. I personally am not. I've watched through the series several times now, and while it does have its problems, I've gotten plenty of enjoyment out of it. I definitely wouldn't advise against newer Star Wars fans checking it out. But back to the subject of this video, after dedicated searching, I have found very few anti-Ahsoka channels, and I find this very concerning. I feel like this is an issue that needs to be addressed, but no matter how many videos I throw up, it's never quite enough for the diehard Ahsoka fans. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make a complete list. A thorough recounting of every blunder Ahsoka's made, as well as every time the writers favored her against all logic. In other words, this is the ultimate breakdown as to why Ahsoka Tano is a bad character. This list includes almost every single episode that Ahsoka makes an appearance in, whether big or small, since almost every time she shows up, she's saying or doing something unsavory. Feel free to hate me for this, but from here on out, there will be nothing but cold, hard facts. On the other hand, if you do enjoy this video or even find it enlightening, be sure to give it a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out parts two and three since this is going to be a three-part series. Let's get into it. Season 1, Episode 2, Rising Malevolence. Plo Koon says he needs reinforcements, and Ahsoka insists that we have to go help him, despite hearing Anakin say they would need to talk to the Council first, since they were given strict orders to protect a specific area. This is a problem first because she doesn't even wait to hear what the Council has to say before making her insistence. This shows that, from the start, she has no respect for authority, chain of command or protocol, and just immediately insists on doing what she wants, when she wants. And second, while some might say that this insistence is a show of selfless behavior, that would be ignoring that she only speaks up due to a personal investment in this situation. It is made clear in the meeting with the council that several such attacks have already happened, but she obviously hasn't argued about searching those wreckages for survivors. She only cares now because she likes Plo Koon. She is ready to abandon an important role as protector in one area to go play hero in another area, where there is a minuscule chance of finding what she wants. Whereas Anakin makes sure that the area he is in charge of protecting is taken care of first before he runs off to go see if he can help elsewhere. Anakin, trying to have a teaching moment with his Padawan before meeting with the Council, reminds her to be mindful and speak only when spoken to. Her response is a bitter-toned, don't I always? Ahsoka, of course, ignores her master's words and interrupts the council when she doesn't agree with what they're saying, embarrassing Anakin. I'm afraid we can't risk any more ships with a rescue mission. Wait! Just because there haven't been any survivors before doesn't mean there won't be any this time. Excuse my Padawan. The writers, of course, shift the blame for her misbehavior by having Obi-Wan comment, well, she is learning from Anakin. When the transmission ends and Anakin scolds Ahsoka, she doesn't apologize. Instead, she immediately starts arguing with him, her anger stemming from the fact that the Council didn't change their mind because of her outburst. She stands there defiantly as Anakin continues to scold. Ahsoka! If anyone could survive, Master Plo could. I don't understand why- What you don't understand is Jedi protocol, or your place, my young Padawan. But I know you won't argue my orders. Come on, Snips. Later, Ahsoka attempts to explain her insubordinate behavior, but the writers have Anakin assure her that she doesn't need to. Her reaction is to sulk. Master, I should tell you why I spoke up before. You don't have to explain anything. Anakin does what Ahsoka wanted, and instead of thanking him, she gets angry at him. Huh. So it's okay when you don't follow what the Council says. Anakin goes on to explain that the issue was the way she was disobedient, not the fact that she disobeyed. This is something we have noted several times in other videos. When Anakin is insubordinate, he's not disrespectful. She is 
blatantly so. And he's trying to teach her the difference, but it's a lesson she never learns. At the end of the episode, when a clone trooper thanks Anakin for coming to rescue them, the writers have Anakin shift the praise to Ahsoka, even though he already had the idea and it was with his authority that they went against orders. Season 1, Episode 3, Shadow of Malevolence. When Anakin tells Ahsoka that she'll be flying with him as his gunner, her lip curls in aversion. We later discover, through Ahsoka's own words, that it's because he worries about her flying ability a thoughtfulness Ahsoka clearly doesn't appreciate. She's upset because she wants to fly her own ship, yet she shows blatant incompetency, inexperience in navigation, and downright panicking when they are flying through the nebula. If she were piloting a craft, she would have certainly been killed, a fact which she never acknowledges. Throughout the episode, Ahsoka repeatedly makes comments showing doubt in Anakin. As they are making their run against the Malevolence and the squad is getting killed off one by one, Ahsoka and Plo Koon both tell Anakin that he needs to change his strategy which he does. He later expresses remorse for the men he got killed, showing a good display of humility. Ahsoka, on the other hand, reveals her massive ego and lust for glory when she demands credit for the plan change. Uh, excuse me? I believe it was my suggestion to change the plan? Anakin and Plo Koon laugh off her bad behavior rather than calling her out for it. Season 1, Episode 6, Downfall of a Droid. When boarding a Trandoshan scavenger ship in search of the missing R2, Ahsoka refuses to play along with Anakin's ruse and almost blows their cover. Pukum's here really has her heart set on another R2. She lost the last one. Pukum's. Oh, brother. Ahsoka is completely oblivious to the danger of the assassin droids, even though they are literally right behind her. Ahsoka insists that R2 is not aboard the scavenger ship, even though Anakin insists that he heard R2 several times. This shows an obvious lack of respect or trust in Anakin. When Anakin insists that Goldie is defective, Ahsoka scolds him. I think I'm lucky to be alive. <laughs> Great! Now you hurt his feelings! Season 1, Episode 7, Duel of the Droids. Ahsoka is willfully ignorant towards the fact that Goldie is a traitor. Aside from the evidence in the previous episode, Goldie wanders off by himself on the enemy ship, endangers everyone by taking his sweet time opening doors, and alerts Grievous to Ahsoka's whereabouts. Ahsoka scolds Rex for reminding Goldie that they are in a very dangerous situation and have no time to dilly-dally. Those droids are getting close, sir. Do you think R3 is going to open up that door anytime soon? He's working on it. Patience, Captain. Ahsoka provokes Grievous and then charges at him, forcing her men to follow her into a battle that they can't win. Later, she shrugs this off with the line, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. She only acknowledges Goldie as a traitor after she's seen Grievous and Goldie conversing as allies. And when Anakin confronts her about it later, she blatantly tries to dump responsibility for ignoring the problem by claiming, I guess we were all fooled, when she was the only one who didn't complain about the obvious problems. And she even reprimanded others for pointing out the issues with Goldie. At the end of the episode, Anakin is scolded by Obi-Wan for putting his men, his Padawan, and the completion of his mission in jeopardy to rescue R2. As soon as the transmission ends, Ahsoka chimes in, piggybacking on Obi-Wan's scolding and reiterating that R2 is just a droid. Remember, this is after Ahsoka reprimanded Anakin for hurting Goldie's feelings when he pointed out that Goldie almost got him killed! Season 1, Episode 9, Cloak of Darkness. Ahsoka graphically threatens Newt Gunray, even though it is against the Jedi Code, to harm or use force against a prisoner. Liar! Liar! I'm tired of all this whining! Tell us what we want to know right now, or I will gut you like a Rocarian dirtfish. <gasps> It's not a weapon the Jedi use. Ahsoka insults Ventress and then threatens to kill her after Ventress quips back. If it isn't the hairless harpy. If it isn't Skywalker's filthy, obnoxious little pet. How nice of you. Tell you what, I'll give you a merciful death. 
Obviously, Ahsoka doesn't understand how this works. Now it's time for some witty back and forth banter. You go first. Okay, look, I'm not sure where to go with that. Ahsoka yells at the clones to shoot Ventress, even though Ahsoka is in the line of fire. Ahsoka tells Luminara that she's not good enough to fight Ventress alone when Ahsoka herself was only engaged in combat with Ventress for a few seconds and lost horribly. Also, she is just a Padawan while Luminara is a Jedi Master. The writers then nerf Luminara so that Ahsoka can save the day. They then force Luminara to apologize to Ahsoka, thus a very Mary Sue moment. Season 1, Episode 11, Dooku Captured. She's barely featured for more than a few minutes in this episode. For the entirety of that appearance, the writers reverse the roles having Anakin and Obi-Wan act like nervous Padawans, trying to cover up their mistakes, making excuses, etc. While Ahsoka acts superior to them, scolding, talking down to them, etc. Season 1, Episode 13, Jedi Crash. Ahsoka disobeys a direct order from Master Ayla Secura because she wants to help Anakin, when in reality, she can't help Anakin, but could be of use flying the ship. Ahsoka argues with Sakura about shutting off the life support when to leave it on would mean they would crash into a star and all die. This is the epitome of stupid. Season 1, Episode 17, Blue Shadow Virus. In this arc, for the most part, Ahsoka is suddenly magically competent and super mature and selfless. However, she still has moments where her real nature spills out. Anakin, speaking to Ahsoka, who sounds perfectly fine, asks if Padme is present and doing all right. Ahsoka tries to guilt trip him and acts like everything revolves around her when she sarcastically adds, I'm okay too, thanks for asking. Season one, episode 18, Mystery of a Thousand Moons. Ahsoka, who in the previous episode was calling for the clones to retreat because she couldn't hold off two droidicas, suddenly has the impeccable ability to rush straight toward two droidicas, leap effortlessly over them, and expertly dispatch them to help her group. And this is after she's been infected and showing signs of weakness, whereas before she was perfectly healthy. Season one, episode 19, Storm Over Ryloth. Ahsoka disobeys orders and talks back to her superiors. Fighter squadron, where are you? Cool your jets, Admiral. She ignores her superiors' warnings that the circumstances of the battle have changed and forges blindly ahead, insisting that the old plan will work. She causes the death of most of their squad as well as the majority of their fleet, which results in thousands of deaths. No disciplinary measures are taken. Instead, Ahsoka is babied and rewarded with the command of the fleet, as well as the opportunity to assert herself. And throughout this, she repeatedly disrespects Anakin by pointing out his faults and constantly undermines him as he tries to resolve the situation, telling him on multiple occasions that he can't do what he's trying to do. Of course, the writers prop her up, by having her create and flawlessly pull off a dubious plan and save the day. Season 2, Episode 1, Holocron Heist. Ahsoka fails to see the bigger picture, as Anakin tried to teach her to do in Storm Over Ryloth. She disobeys orders several times and disrespects her master. The droids are retreating! We're outnumbered. You must evacuate. That is an order. Master Skywalker taught me never to let up when the tinnies are on the run. They are running back here to regroup with the main force. Can't you see they're retreating? They're about to overrun you, Ahsoka. You just can't see it. Now follow orders and get in the ship. When she is reprimanded by the Council, she dodges responsibility for her actions, claiming, I didn't disobey. I just forgot and Anakin covers for her, saying the blame is on him. When the Council rightfully punishes her, assigning her to act as guard in the temple archives, she whines about it. But when Jocasta Nu asks her if she's up to the important task, she proudly proclaims, definitely. Of course, the writers reward Ahsoka in the end by having her coincidental presence in the archives put her in the perfect position to play hero. Season 2, Episode 2, Cargo of Doom. Ahsoka sulks when Anakin doesn't take her suggestion to just leave and destroy the ship, and thus Bane and the Holocron as well. Ahsoka then suddenly insists on catching Bane. She chases after him 
following him away from the others and ignoring Anakin as he calls after her, explicitly warning her that it's a trap. Because of Ahsoka's rash behavior, Anakin is forced to open the holocron for Bane and let him get away. When Anakin then wants to continue going after Bane, Ahsoka yells at him for acting rashly and orders him to flee the ship with her. He hangs his head and obeys, and shortly after has to stop Ahsoka from jumping off the transport and going after the holocron again. At the end of the episode, the writers have Anakin take the responsibility off of Ahsoka by reassuring her that it wasn't your fault, it was mine, start to finish. Season 2, Episode 3, Children of the Force. Ahsoka, after losing miserably to Bane each time she has encountered him, requests to take the lead on the case, since she has a score to settle. This openly displays her vengeful streak, which is not called out by anyone present, and also shows that her own ego is more important to her than the successful completion of an important mission. One which, if you need reminding, involved the rescuing of innocent children. Predictably, when she tries to take on Bane again, with the element of surprise in her favor, she fails miserably. After Anakin captures Bane, Ahsoka proceeds to give herself a pat on the back by claiming, looks like I win. And then she takes back her Padawan braid with a snotty, self-important attitude. I think I've earned the right to wear this again. Ahsoka whines when she and Anakin are put in charge of examining Bane's ship, instead of being brought along with Obi-Wan and Windu to be part of the action, showing a complete lack of appreciation or respect for the mundane, behind-the-scenes work that is essential for any mission to succeed. Season 2, Episode 5, Landing at Point Rain. Ahsoka, in the middle of an active war zone, worries that Obi-Wan could be injured or worse. And it is heavily implied that she wants Anakin to drop what they are doing so they can go find Kenobi. So much so that he has to tell her to get her head back in the game because the only way to help Kenobi is to successfully complete their mission. When they run into a heavily armed fortress wall, Ahsoka, while clones are being slaughtered around them, cheerfully disparages Anakin, saying, Well, this is another fine mess you've gotten us into. After Anakin tries to defend himself, she continues to sarcastically mouth off at him, until he barks an order at her to get ready to continue the mission. Well, this is another fine mess you've gotten us into. What? Hey, it's not my fault. You were supposed to study the holomaps. I did! Remember when I reminded you about the giant wall and you said, don't worry, we won't be anywhere near that. Just get ready to climb. Some people might think this is simply banter, but it's not. There is a lot of banter in the show, and in each circumstance, the participants are calm, and their tone of voice is light and teasing. Anakin is stressed and angered by Ahsoka dumping on him, and her tone carries clear disrespect and annoyance. Season 2, Episode 6, Weapons Factory. The problem of Anakin undermining Ahsoka appears in this one episode, and never again, as a cheap shot to make the audience sympathize with Ahsoka. During their spat over his interruption, Ahsoka whines that he doesn't trust her. A hypocritical complaint, considering on numerous occasions she has proved that she barely trusts him. When he tries to explain that isn't the case, Ahsoka interrupts him with an angry, No, I understand. I'm the Padawan, you're the master. A statement which she finishes in a very dark tone, displaying her clear resentment of those in authority over her. When Barris humbly introduces herself, Anakin glances at Ahsoka with a look that says, Well, will you reciprocate? And Ahsoka's expressive response says, Ugh, hell nah! Showing again her massive ego and unwillingness to humble herself in respect to anyone. Ahsoka haughtily tells Anakin that she'll be fine working a dangerous mission with Barriss since... As you well know, I can follow orders. <laughs> the first thing she does when they get to the tunnels is try to take the lead, even though she has no idea which way to go. Ahsoka argues with Barris about which direction they should go when they are surrounded by a host of sleeping Geonosians. When Barris replies, this is the fastest route, Ahsoka tries to undermine her by saying, maybe you're wrong. Girl, if she's wrong about this, you have no hope at all. 
you're not the one who memorized 200 junctions. Ahsoka goes against her core personality, sacrificing herself so that the writers can trick the audience into thinking she's more likable than she really is. When the trapped Padawans believe they may die buried in the rubble, Barra says that she takes comfort knowing that they saved countless lives. Ahsoka noticeably avoids agreeing with this sentiment. It's clear she'd rather prioritize her own safety over the lives of others. At the end of the episode, Luminara praises Barris for a job well done. But the writers have Barris shift the praise to Ahsoka for sending the signal to get them rescued. Another trick to keep focus and good feelings directed primarily at Ahsoka. Season 2, Episode 8, Brain Invaders. Ahsoka tells Barris that Anakin is a bit radical, and Peace wouldn't agree with him when she, herself, is even more guilty of these things. She literally says in the previous scene that it's too quiet. And when Barris tells her to enjoy the piece, Ahsoka replies, It's too quiet. It's a big change from all the fighting the last few days. You should enjoy this piece while it lasts. I can't. I can't. I can't. Also, Anakin experienced peace before the Clone Wars and got along with it just fine. Ahsoka, on the other hand, makes it clear that she doesn't even know the meaning of the word peace. Season 2, Episode 11, Lightsaber Lost. Ahsoka acts openly disgusted with a poor, sick individual just for the fact that he is poor and sick. She has no interaction with him, she judges him solely based on his appearance. And this is the chick many fans describe as what the Jedi should be. Ahsoka acts obnoxious when she sees someone eyeing her. She pats her lightsaber as if to say, don't mess with me, scum, I'm a Jedi, and gives a very self-satisfied smile. Immediately after this, she stands in the path of an oncoming crowd, instead of just moving out of the way, losing her lightsaber as a result. She repeatedly disrespects a senior Jedi throughout him offering his help freely, rolling her eyes at him, talking over him, trying to leave him behind, ignoring his advice, calling him Gramps, etc. She mishandles the dealings with the smugglers instead of relying on the advice of someone who is experienced in the criminal workings of the underworld. She uses brute force and excessive intimidation against an unarmed, injured, non-force user and doesn't even stop when she is reprimanded by the authority figure present with her. Well, well. Banamu, I assume. Who are you, huh? Why do you want that? My lightsaber, you slimy thief. I want it back. Now, you little- Ahsoka! It's not smart to steal from a Jedi. Uh, you're looking a little too young to be a Jedi. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Come on. Oh. At the end of the episode, Ahsoka is told to pass on the lesson of patience she learned to a class of younglings. She instead starts reiterating to them that your lightsaber is your life and your responsibility. Never let it out of your sight. What? Season 2, Episode 17, Bounty Hunters. Ahsoka wrongfully accuses Anakin of being a bad pilot. She takes charge of Anakin and Obi-Wan. Again, a role reversal. You always taught me to go on instinct, and my instincts tell me to go that way. No, that, that doesn't seem right. I think we should go this way. Why do you even ask for my opinion? You never do things my way. We crashed the ship your way. Very funny. I see your sense of humor survived the landing. It's about the only thing. Uh, if you two are done arguing, I think there's some smoke on the horizon, which means people, and a way off this planet. When the bounty hunters catch them off guard, Anakin's reaction is to play it cool. And he has to stop Ahsoka from immediately acting hostile. Kindly drop your weapons, Jedi. Take it easy, Snips. We don't want any trouble. She gets angry when the bounty hunters tromp on her ego by not counting her as a threat. For Anwan is hardly a fair fight, even for a Jedi. Wait a minute. Four on one? You mean four on two? We don't count you, Nihai. Because she's not prominently featured in this episode, the writers make sure to take the time to showcase her as a hero by having her help Serapis out of a vaguely unsafe situation. Season 2, Episode 21, R2 Come Home. Ahsoka barely shows up in this episode. 
In her short appearance, she playfully punches her injured master, completely disregarding his obvious pain. Season 2, Episode 22, Lethal Trackdown. Ahsoka jeopardizes Plo Koon's mission to find information. Five times in a row, as we are told with her lack of subtlety. In order to protect Ahsoka from the brunt of this criticism, the writers have Plo Koon wrongfully throw Anakin under the bus. She backs right up into the people she's eavesdropping on, forcing Plo Koon to drop his own attempts at gathering information to get her out of there. When he expresses disappointment, she informs him of what she learned, and her mistakes are immediately forgotten. He pats her on the shoulder and praises her, well done! Seasons 1 and 2 are the seasons that even have Ahsoka fans admitting that Ahsoka can be cringy. Most seem to agree, however, that she dramatically improves over the rest of the show, thus showing clear character growth. Be sure to watch part two, where we analyze seasons three to five and show that this is, in fact, not the case.